This is going to be another question and answer video. And this question is, does the Holy Ghost convict in thoughts or when we read the Word of God? I believe the quick answer to that is both. In John 16, 7 through 11, it says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. The Comforter is the Holy Spirit. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. When he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they believe not on me, of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more, of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. So it said he's going to reprove the world of sin. So the Holy Ghost convinces people of their sin he convinces us that we are guilty that is obviously what he does and when peter preached when he was full of the holy ghost in acts chapter 2 it is said that the people were pricked in their heart in acts 2 37 so preaching that convicts people would be holy ghost filled preaching in second timothy 4 2 when paul tells timothy about preaching he says preach the word be instant in season out of season reprove rebuke exhort with all long suffering and doctrine so preaching that reproves and rebukes and has doctrine is the kind of preaching that is holy ghost filled preaching but it's not the kind of preaching that people want so it says in the next verse in second timothy 4 3 for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And then in Isaiah 3, 9 and 10, it says that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear of the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto, not unto us right things, but you know, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. So you see, people don't like Holy Ghost-filled preaching that would convict people of their sin and make them feel guilty about sin you can obviously get under conviction about a certain sin by reading the bible for yourself it is so sweet for us as bible believers and at the same time can be so bitter when it crosses us about our sin like in revelation 10 10 it says john said and i took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up and it was in my mouth sweet as honey and as soon as I had eaten it my, it, my belly was bitter. The best thing to do is do something about your sin when the Holy Spirit convicts you of it. And if you don't do anything about it, then it is like looking in the mirror and seeing your hair messed up, sleep in your eyes, hairs in your nose and ears, food on your face, and everything else, and just not doing anything about it. You see, the Word is like a mirror, and the Holy Spirit shows you who you really are. In James 1, through 25, it says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. So the Holy Spirit will use preaching that uses the Word. He will use the Word itself. And He can use your thoughts to convict you as well. Because in John fourteen twenty six it says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. So God brings the Word to your remembrance. He puts the words you've read and heard in your thoughts. And when you sin, what happens? You remember. The Bible said this. The Bible said that about that certain sin. So the Lord does use our thoughts. He does put thoughts into the hearts of people. For example, in Ezra chapter 1 and verse 1, it says, Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord steered up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia. So he steered up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia. The God puts thoughts into your heart. So the next question comes up. Can the devil harass you? 
by putting thoughts in your head and in your heart? I believe the answer is yes, because once you are confessed up, you move on. Once you confess a certain sin, you move on, and God isn't going to keep badgering you about that sin. You've already got it confessed. You know, when a man cheats on his wife, maybe they get back together and she somewhat forgives him, but then every time he messes up, she brings it back up, which is hard for a person not to do because we're not God. However, God doesn't bring things back up. He doesn't hold things against you. He's forgiven your sins forever when it comes to salvation. And on a daily basis, when you confess your sin and forsake that sin, the Lord's not going to keep bringing it back up. So if it's continuously brought back up when you're not doing that sin anymore, you know that's the devil and not God. Because it says in 1 John 1, 9, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So He's not going to keep bringing it back up after you've confessed it and forsook it. The devil, however, does harass and bring up old stuff. Revelation 12.10 calls him the accuser of the brethren. That's all he wants to do is point out your faults. The Pharisees who are led by the devil find fault. Uh, examples of the devil harassing you is when thoughts come into mind such as that God doesn't want to talk to you because of the certain sin you committed. That's a complete lie because God always wants to talk to you. Uh, he might say you shouldn't try to continue serving God because you committed a certain sin. God will never put thoughts like that in your mind because God always wants you to serve God no matter what you've done. Uh, the devil might say you're not qualified because of a certain sin. I mean, nobody's really qualified to serve God. We, God's just allowing us to. So it's not God telling you that. Uh, the devil might say you should give up your Sunday school class, your preaching, your teaching ministry because of a certain sin. All that is from the devil because God doesn't want to want you to give up anything. God wants you to have the victory. All these things come from the mindset of defeat. The devil is about defeating you. He wants you to feel defeated. None of these things that I just said, that's not the mindset of getting the victory. God wants you to finish your course. Even if you've messed up, he wants you to finish well. The devil doesn't want you to finish, so he's putting all these thoughts of defeat in your mind. So all of this, these things like that is coming from the devil. And remember, God saved you even though he knew every sin you would ever commit. He still saved you. He knew every sin you ever did and every sin you would commit after you were saved. So how do you know if it is the Lord or the devil? Well, if you're still committing the same sin after you confessed it, then the Lord is going to bother you about it. And it's a good thing that he bothers you. But it will be, you know, that's wrong. You need to get this right. You need to draw close to me. That, that's God talking to you. If you're still committing the same sin over and over, God's going to bother you. He's going to tell you, come back to me. Quit this certain sin. Come back and fellowship. But if you have thoughts about past sins that you don't even commit anymore, then that's from the devil. And he's going to use this to try to make you give up or to make you feel like you're not qualified to serve God. And if you're having thoughts about quitting and giving up over a certain sin that you're still struggling with and having trouble getting victory over, if you're having thoughts about quitting because of that certain sin you're still currently doing, if you're having thoughts that this sin disqualifies you in some way, that's from the devil because he's trying to get you to give up. He's trying to get you to give up serving God, and he's trying to get you to give up about fighting the certain sin. And the devil will talk you into committing a sin and tell you that it's okay and that it's going to be fun and tell you how much of a dirty dog you are after you did it. You see, he makes it fun, and then after you do it, he makes you feel awful about it. He wants you to give up. God will be telling you not to do it before you do it and then bother you about doing it after you commit the act because he wants you to come back to him. He doesn't want you to stay in that certain sin. James 4, 8 says, Draw not to God and he will draw not to you. Some parents and grandparents have complete unconditional love for their kids even though they have robbed them and cussed them and taken everything they have. 
they still have unconditional love for them. Does God not love you more than any parent could? Do you think that just because you've messed up or committed a certain sin over and over again, that God's not holy enough and loving enough to say, come back to me, I want to be in fellowship with you. Anytime that something's saying God doesn't want to talk to you or God doesn't want to fellowship with you or God's not going to use you, all that's from the devil. The devil is about defeat. God is about victory. The devil is about making you give up. God is continuously saying, get back up, finish well. You know, a just man falls seven times, he's going to get back up. He wants you to get back up after a thousand times, a hundred thousand times. He wants you to keep getting back up. The devil wants to convince you that you got to stay down, that you've done it too many times. The devil's about defeat, God's about victory. That, that answers the question on that. So... I hope this answers the question. And the question was, does the Holy Ghost convict in thoughts or when we read the Word? I believe the answer is both. You know, if you hide the Word in your heart, He's going to bring it to your remembrance. God's going to talk to you in your thoughts with His Word. Now, He doesn't... I don't believe that God talks to you and tells you stuff that's not in His Word. He uses the Word. He brings it to your remembrance when you read the word now in the in the devil he's going to harass you and he's going to use your thoughts but it's god leads you to want you to have victory the devil wants you to be defeated that's how you can recognize the difference